Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Radiant Central and I'm your host Natasha St. Michael and thank you so much for joining me. So today I want to talk about bullying. This is, this is a topic that I always feel just really badly about when I, I think about myself being bullied online and, and when I see other people that are being bullied and just just some of the terrible things people say to each other and it, it's so sad to see like whenever I think about bullying I always think about back when I was a kid you know like in elementary school or a teenager and the bullies at school or, or in the playground and and you never think or at least I never thought back then that I'd ever be bullied as an adult and in fact I got bullied a few years ago I think some people know when I had another YouTube channel and and I was getting off of a raw food diet and incorporating animal products into my diet because I had a B12 deficiency, there was some certain people that negatively reacted to it and, and there was other people, a few individuals that were quite cruel. I got bullied online, I, I received like crazy hate emails from people, like all sorts of crazy stuff and, and it was just a whirlwind of just weirdness. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of went with with my change of diet and and later on it actually I changed my YouTube channel I, I started a different website like everything just to sort of separate myself from that negativity and so I personally have a lot of experience dealing with the bullying and all of that and and luckily over the years it's definitely dwindled down here and there I do still receive some crazy emails and stuff but it's really not that much and and over the years I've definitely developed a thicker skin I, I definitely never foresee, foresaw myself to have to deal with something like that, but it made me stronger because I, I tend to be a, a very peaceful, passive person, and and I just I, I don't like conflict, I don't like debates, and I, I don't I don't like dealing with that stuff, and. I've learned a lot over the years and, and perhaps today I'd share some of what I've learned and how I've learned to deal with people's meanness and the cruelty and, and all that because I think the big issue with bullying, especially online bullying, is that online bullying people are behind a computer screen and, and it's very anonymous and you can people can just shoot out emails and say crazy stuff and, and not have to show their face and not have to take responsibility for what they're doing. and. And unfortunately, being on the receiving end of that can be really tough. It can be very, very hard. And so I would say to anyone that's dealing with bullying, the first thing I would strongly, strongly recommend is, is first of all, never to suffer alone. Always connect with someone, either a family member, a friend, or a counselor, someone, and talk to them. Let it out. Don't carry that stuff inside. Don't deal with that kind of stuff alone. I find in general, it's like if we keep things inside, it only it just makes it bigger. It makes it heavier. It makes it harder. And a lot of times, if we have at least one person to talk to, then we can get it out, and they can share the load. And and a lot of times, we can gain better perspective as well. I know for myself, when I was dealing a lot with bullying, I just moved to Bali. I had no friends here. I had no family here. Nothing. And and I was like being harassed online. <laughs> and. It was a really rough time in my life, and luckily, like I, I have, I could Skype my family and my, my, you know, and have them like support me and and talk to me and listen to me, and that was really good that I had people to talk to, but I didn't have anyone physically here with me. I didn't have my my best friends, my buddies, and I at that time I even hired like a counselor to talk to just because I knew I couldn't deal with that stuff alone, and I needed I needed someone just to let it out to, someone to share that to just dump it out on. <laughs> <laughs> and and I always found too that the more I talked about it, I almost felt like it was a purging process to talk about it. it it's kind of like once you get it out, you you also release it from inside, and it just it makes the load much lighter. And I just also felt that I would get way better perspective. It's kind of like I'd be able to listen to myself speak and to listen to myself tell the story of what's going on and to see it as a story and to see it that it's not really about me it's about someone else's craziness and, and that I'm on the receiving end of it and it's my responsibility to deal with how I'm going to react to it and how I'm going to process it and, and if I'm going to let it affect me or if I'm going to just let it just dissolve right off me and move forward from it and so I found really by being able to talk to people about it it just gave me perspective you know and the, and the second thing is it's, it's about really it's seeing what that that bullying or, or the the cruelty and the meanness and, and all that where that's really coming from and being able to separate yourself from it you know as I said it's about seeing it as someone else's story someone else's issue someone else's opinion it's it's about them but 
what, and we don't have any 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 control over that, right? It's but we what we do have control over is how we're going to react to it, how we're going to respond to it. And I find for myself one thing that I remind myself over and over again is that when someone's throwing fire at me, the last thing I want to do is throw fire back because it's just going to create more fire, right? You never want to fight fire with fire. And it's about being like water. You know, the more I'm like water, responding to someone else's hate and, and anger, it, it just allows them to either burn themselves out or go over me without touching me, without affecting me. But if I react with the same type of fire that they're throwing at me, then it just makes the situation huge. And so I find that a lot of times when I'm in these situations is asking myself, how can I react like water? How can I just let this stuff just float over me, that it doesn't touch me? You know, how can I handle this situation in a way that, that I just deflect it? You know, that I have like almost like a protective bubble around me that just deflects all negativity. <laughs> and that really helps. You know, it's almost even visualizing that and seeing it that way. And also seeing again too that it's it's separating myself from the situation and, and seeing that all I'm responsible for is is how I'm going to take that stuff in and how I'm processing and, and what I'm going to do with it after. But when it comes down to the actual issue, it's it's about them. And when I see it that way, I also see too that I have to say ask myself too like, how how much someone's opinion of me or what I'm doing how important is that. Do I really need other people's validation? Do I really need other people's approval? And a lot of times it comes back to, you know, I, I don't really need anyone to tell me if I'm good or bad. I know for myself what I'm doing and how I'm living my life, if that is something that lives up to my own standards. And that's what's most important. I don't need someone else's validation. I don't need someone else's approval. And I certainly don't need someone else dictating whether I'm a good or bad person or what I'm doing, whether that's good or bad. And when I see it that way, then I also just see that, like, you know, who is this person that, that's trying to bully me? They're not God. They're not someone with superhuman powers. They're, they're nothing. You know? And in fact, they're dealing with situations that perhaps they don't approve of or they don't agree with in such a low way. And you know what? I never want to be like that person. So a lot of times too, it's about seeing that I need to validate myself. It's all about me <laughs> and improving myself. And it's about me liking myself. It's, it's, it doesn't matter whether other people like me or not. And that's something too to, to think about. You know, how, how many times do we go through the day seeking someone else's approval and validation? How many times a day do, when we're faced with making choices, are we thinking about other people's approval and validation over our own? And I find when I went through that whole experience of being bullied, was I really reinforced my own approval of myself and my own way of validating myself and getting back to living a life that's authentically mine. And I have to say sometimes too that these situations of being bullied can actually be a positive thing because it gets you back to who you are and what you want to be and how you're living your life and living true to yourself. I also have to say too that looking at those, like those bullies and stuff, I never want to be someone like that. And I take each and every experience of being bullied and just how low people go <laughs> as examples as to like what I never want to be. And, and in ways too, it's like then I look at that person and I say thank you. <laughs> Thank you for showing me what I don't want to do, what I don't want to ever repeat to someone else. And, and at the same time, I have to remember too, is that it's their story, their stuff. And a lot of times, and I've said this in other videos, is a lot of times people's cruelty comes down to the fact that, that within them, th th they have so many issues. And that's why they're doing that. If they were happy, peaceful, wonderful people, they might think, think about their actions before they do things. They might have a little bit more restraint or self-control or, or just think about how the repercussions of their actions. And unfortunately, in situations where people are bullying and, and targeting people and, and all of that, it's like they're not thinking before they're doing. They're just doing their stuff and, and that's their stuff. And so it's about really focusing on yourself and, and how you want to live your life and how you want your life to play out and how you are going to create value when you're interacting with people. And I guess lastly, too, is one thing, and this is more of a practical thing, is to think about, too, like, where are you going online? You know, like, this for me was a big wake-up call. Like, 
after I was being bullied and stuff, there was a lot of websites I just I could never I couldn't even look at because it's not even that people were talking to me or bullying me. It's that I would see people bullying other people, and it just like freaked me out. And I was very very sensitive to it. That I stopped visiting a lot of websites, especially social media, all that, and and I kind of asked myself, like, where are the websites that create value in my life and get me like inspired and happy and creative, and what are the websites that are just a downer, that are just like, like just awful, just negative, just heavy, just ugh, <laughs> and and really go through that and think about like, what am I, what am I exposing myself to every day? What am I visiting? What am I reading? What am I taking in? Is that good or is that bad? And I know for myself, I really reevaluated my time on the internet. And and nowadays, I, I'm I love going to see like websites that are creative, perhaps more more having to do with art and and, and other things that interest me that that are inspiring me. You know, food recipes, things like that, as opposed to going to websites or social media where people are debating or putting people down or, or fighting over stuff. I just, I'm not into that. So that too, it's asking yourself like what you're visiting online and your time online, is it creating value or is it just bringing you down even more? All right, so these are my tips for today. And, and I just want to mention too that the next 10 Day Days Fasting program, it starts next Tuesday, March 3rd. It's a 10 Day Days Fasting program. It's completely online and it's a group program. So you're not doing the Juice Fast alone. It's people from all over the world that are joining together. And once you sign up, you get the PDF document that outlines the complete Juice Fast, which is like what to drink, how much, all of that. And then once the program actually starts, you get access to an online forum where you get to connect with everyone else doing the Juice Fast with you. I'm on the forum every day answering questions and offering additional support. And then there's also daily videos that walk you through everything you need to know about doing a Juice Fast. And super inspiring and motivating and also just <laughs> sort of guiding you through each and every day of the Juice Fast and what to do about cravings and and detox symptoms and you know the first few days of being on a juice fast and also other things that you can add into the juice fast to feel good like doing exercise and taking care of your skin and all sorts of stuff it's a great program it's 10 days and pretty much i have to say that most people that do an online program for juice fast they're more victorious and successful with the juice fast as opposed to doing it by themselves so this is a great program if you want to do it as a group and want that extra support and motivation and, and have fun with it. And I have to say both beginner juice fasters and experienced are completely welcome. So if you want to join us, go to my website at radiantcentral.com, click on products and you'll see 10 day juice fasting program there. Have a super fabulous day everyone and I'll see you again soon. Bye.